Okay, sounds good. Hi, I'm Addison Hood. I'm your guys' Benchmonic Interventional Rep. I'm just going over what Endo Flip is. It's a new device that KU has recently acquired that helps physicians intraprocedurally while the patient is sedated, assess motility, and assess the LES of the esophagus. So the physicians in real time are able to assess if the patient needs further monometry motility assessment or if the patient is a candidate for a Bravo reflex, assess, or reflex assessment. Um, so today we're just gonna kind of dive in, tell you what the setup looks like, tell you what the different values you're going to assist the physician in recording are. Um, and yeah, so we'll just go ahead and get started. So first, we're gonna go over how to turn on the machine. Um, there's two different monitors on the machine. There's the smaller one up front and this larger one up top. So both monitors have separate power sources, so you need to turn both on. So for the smaller one, you're gonna go ahead and hit the switch in the back. And then for the larger one, it's a touch screen, so you're just going to hold it until you see these buttons line up. Light up. Um, so then you guys have two different options for catheters. There's the 322N, which is kind of your go-to catheter. It's a 16 centimeter long balloon with 16 sensors along that 16 centimeter balloon. This assesses the motility as well as the LES in the esophagus. In addition to that balloon, you guys have the 325N, which is used to assess um, a specific sphincter. So it can assess the LES as well as, well as the pyloric sphincter. So for this case, we're just going to go ahead and grab the 322N. Um, so one thing to note about the catheters is they come packaged five catheters in a box and five syringes in a box. So with each catheter, you need to make sure that you grab the catheter and the syringe out of the same box. You can't grab a syringe out of one box and a catheter out of another. These syringes are pre-filled to match these catheters. So these are the two supplies that you're going to need. Um, the first screen that pops up is just a warning. Basically, this little piece right here is going to be moving, so be sure to keep your fingers clear. Make sure nothing is inserted into this area for now. So you're just gonna go ahead and press continue. You'll see that this is moving. Next, we're going to get your syringe and catheter ready. So the syringe or the catheter comes in a bag like this. You're gonna go ahead and remove it from the bag. The first step is removing this plastic sheath over the balloon. Just to get the balloon out of your hands, you can go ahead and insert it in this cylinder, this stainless steel cylinder here. Next, we are going to go ahead and plug the catheter into the syringe. So this is a really important thing to note. Before the syringe gets put, put in the syringe holder, you need to remove this red cap and make sure that it's plugged into the catheter. If it's put into place with the red cap on, then um, pressure can build up and it can damage the machine. So after the syringe and catheter are connected, you're gonna go ahead and remove this pink foamy part over the catheter. You're going to then look for the green dot. The catheter power source is inserted green dot to green dot. So you just push it straight in. A similar warning is going to pop up just stating that this syringe port is going to adjust for the size syringe that is suited for this cap. I'm sorry, for this catheter. So you're gonna go ahead and press continue. You'll see that movement. When you're inserting the syringe, you wanna make sure that this port is facing towards you and you wanna make sure that the wings of the syringe go in this little syringe holder and this circle fits over this part right here. So you're going to put those into place and lock it. So you might need to fiddle with this a little bit, and then you're going to put that to the 12 o'clock position. So this catheter has been used previously, but um, in a normal sense, you're going to go ahead and press purge catheter. The purging process takes about two minutes. It should be done before the patient enters the room as the physician is getting ready for the procedure. It's basically inflating the balloon and deflating the balloon, um, making sure all the sensors are working properly, making sure that the, there are no leaks or holes in the balloon. Um, sometimes, on occasion, 
the bloom will fail the purging process, my advice for you there, a little troubleshooting, is go ahead and unplug and re-plug back in the catheter. Make sure that there's nothing in the stainless steel cylinder that could be obstructing the balloon and go ahead and re-purge it. If you get any um, alarm saying that the catheter isn't recognized, that there's any issues with the catheter, your first step in troubleshooting is making sure that the catheter power source is clean. So go ahead and use a little alcohol swab, clean off those sensors, wait for it to dry and re-plug it in, see if that fixes the problem, and then as always, you can call tech support if you're experiencing further problems. Um, try and troubleshoot a little bit before go ahead and tossing the catheter because there are ways that you can work around it, especially if you guys are running low on catheters. Um, so this just takes about two minutes, it just inflates, deflates, um, and then after that two minutes is up, you're ready to start the procedure. Um, before starting the procedure, you can go ahead and grab your book. This is your go-to reference guide. In the book, there is this worksheet that the nurses should be filling out during the procedure. Along with the worksheet, there's a step-by-step -step reference that walks you through all of these steps. Um, and then there's interpretation guides for the physician. So now that our catheter is fully purged, and the physician then does the EGD, they'll take note of the um, LES, the measurement of the LES. You're going to add two to the LES, um, the measurement of the LES, and that's because this sensor here counts as the zero measurement. We want two of these sensors to be in the patient's stomach. So we want to see the LES right about at sensor three. So you're going to take a magic or a black permanent marker and add two to the LES to ensure two of those sensors are in the patient's stomach. You're then going to grab the catheter, hold it as level as possible, and you're going to press this pressure zero button. So you'll hear some inflation and deflation. Then you'll see these white dots here thinking. After those white dots disappear and you see the pressure is near zero, you'll know that the catheter is ready to go. So the physician has since removed the scope. You'll hand this to the, the physician and they'll place this down the patient's esophagus to that predetermined black mark that you've already marked. Then you'll go ahead and inflate. This inflation button is right here. You'll go ahead and press that. During the inflation process, you'll see two in two different places what the volume in the balloon is. You can look here in this white square and you'll see it climbing up gradually. And then you can also look here next to this drop of water. In addition to that, you can see what the volume of the balloon is, or of the syringe here and here. Um, so we're waiting for it to get to 30. As soon as it gets to 30, you'll go ahead and press the stop button here. 30 is basically a place to identify those anatomical landmarks. So you want to see a small waist here, indicating that that's where the LES is. And then the rest of the esophagus should be pretty uniform. The physician will then see peristaltic waves, similar to what they, they would see on a manometry study. If these waves are normal, then that indicates the patient is experiencing normal motility. Um, if they're abnormal, then that indicates that the patient may need further manometry studies. So after it's inflated, you'll go ahead and press these three dots. Press the show distensibility button here. During this procedure, we're looking for two main values for the physician to record. We're looking at the diameter along with the distensibility. The main place that the physician wants to take note of this is in the LES. So typically that green number will coincide with the LES. It's a pretty fluid number, so it'll, you'll see lots of movement, but the physician will point out what diameter they want you to record and what distensibility. Distensibility is giving you a measurement of how easily that um, LES opens or close. closes. The smaller the distensibility, the more likely the patient is to have achalasia. So basically anything under four um, gives a potential achalasia diagnosis. So then you're gonna go ahead and inflate to several different numbers along with taking note of those measurements on this worksheet. So the next number you're going to inflate to is 40. You're going to press stop. You'll take note of these green numbers. So you'll take note of the diameter and distensibility at the LES. The physician will um, take note of what the mo 
motility looks like of the esophagus, then you'll inflate to your next number, which will be 50. So you're watching here or here, watching for it to get closer to 50. And again, you'll take note of what the diameter and distensibility are at the LES here. Next, the last and final fill volume is 60. Um, 60 is the maximum fill volume, so you don't need to worry about stopping the inflation. It'll automatically stop. 60 is the most accurate fill volume, so it'll give the most accurate information on this distensibility and diameter, really stretching that sphincter as much as possible. Um, after the values are recorded at 60, you'll go ahead and deflate all the way. I, re I recommend putting a pad right here so that after the physician is done with the procedure, after it's completely deflated, you go ahead and place this on the pad right here rather than back in the cylinder. If you place it back in the cylinder, then it completely contami contaminates, contaminates the cylinder. Um, so typically, if there's one after another, you're not gonna have enough time to clean the cylinder between each case, and this obviously depends on your hospital protocol. So after it's completely deflated, you'll go ahead and take down the um, syringe and catheter the same way you set it up. But before that, the physician will want to you to press these three dots, go to report, and they will answer the following questions to get a potential diagnosis. So is distensibility index low? No. RRCs? So they'll go through and answer these questions and get a potential diagnosis. Then with the picture in picture, they'll be able to take a picture of this report and attach it to the report in the patient's chart. So then you'll go ahead and press these three dots again, press home. We're still waiting for it to deflate all the way. In the meantime, you can go ahead and hold this button to turn off the main monitor. The main monitor is a touch screen, so it takes a little bit longer to turn off, so you'll go ahead and hold it down. Until it's all the way black, and we're still waiting for this to deflate. Typically, the physician is able to remove the catheter from the patient's esophagus when it's inflated to about 20. It's a pliable catheter um, balloon, so the typical process there. After it's fully deflated, you're going to take it down the same way you put it together. So you'll go ahead and open the syringe port, move this back to 3 o'clock, unplug the catheter, take out the syringe, and then hit the on-off switch in the back. And that's it. That's the whole procedure.